Hey everybody, I ran a poll to see what people wanted to watch next and the overwhelming answer was advanced strategy. Well, you're in luck because I just did some advanced shit. So, today I'm going to show you 7 tips to defeat Simanti. I keep seeing this in Polytopia Reddit. People say, how do I beat Simanti? They're so annoying, they're overpowered and they are tough, but I'm going to show you a couple of strategies here. So. By turn three, I immediately noticed the Simanti terrain, so the first step is knowledge. Just kidding, that doesn't really count as a step. Now that I'm on the second city, I ran the Explorer and I got a good idea of what's back there. Kinda wanted to know what was ahead of me. So right away, he's got a turbocharged hexapod. Came from this back corner. So here's the first step. Try to figure out where their shamans are. Whoa, look at my face. <laughs> Hang on one second. That's better. Now I'm one with Polytopia. All right, I was trying to get fancy, but I guess I'll just have to put my normal face in the corner here. I'll just have to not block anything with my own face. Okay, so back to it. Step one, try to locate their shaman. It's super advantageous if you can destroy that guy. Uh, it gives them a big advantage because they don't have any roads and their troops will be faster and stronger and everything. So you don't really want them to have a shaman. In this case, I don't really get to a shaman, but good to know. Um, so you really want to just attack their units. The big weakness of Simanti in the early game is that most players will just start spamming hexapods and turbocharge them and ram them at you. But uh, they're kind of weak. They get hurt. They can get killed in one hit by a warrior. So you want to keep their unit number down. So that leads me to my next step which is make a lot of units and zone them accordingly. So you can see he's kind of rushing me with hexapods and warriors. So I've got a lot of warriors uh, in this area and they're kind of spaced out in a formation here so they can support one another and they can also put pressure on him if I want to. So he's really just beating me up. Um, I know that he can take me off of that. So uh, this brings me to the next step already, but this is gonna go throughout the whole video, so I'll keep coming back to this, but you really wanna keep the pressure high on Simanti and play pretty aggressively, if only just to slow them down. So in this case, I did not take this treasure because I knew he would knock me off. And I'm taking this village, I know he's gonna knock me off of that too, but at least he has to commit a whole unit to knocking me off of that village. And I've got all these units standing by to knock him off of that village, so. This stops him from just steamrolling me, which I'm sure is something that happens to a lot of players and they go against Simanti. Um, really just bogging him down and going blow for blow with them. The warriors only cost two and his hexapods cost three. So it actually is more costly for him to waste a hexapod on a warrior or have me destroy one of his hexapods with a warrior. All right, let's keep going. So uh, this brings me to yet another step. I'm going through fast, but they're kind of happening all throughout the whole match. But keep exploring and capturing villages because in a 1v1 with Simanti, and anyone really, you just want to hold more territory than them so that you choke them for resources. So even though I'm uh, full on battling him and it's looking kind of spooky over here, I still have this unit uh, slowly trudging to these villages and I've got this unit exploring up here and taking villages and if I can surround him I'll be in really good shape so there he goes he doesn't have climbing at least and two hexapods that's uh, not great but got a warrior so I really won that exchange star wise and uh, you see I've got all these archers here that brings me to my next tip uh, as soon as I saw that there was Simanti terrain I'm immediately thinking, how am I going to get range on the battlefield? Uh, a gaggle of archers or a bunch of catapults are really tough for Simanti to deal with if you place them well. So you really want to use archers to control a zone uh, because the archers themselves are weak, but they have that range. So this whole area where there's a lot of action is covered by archers right now. And even if they have to come from far away, uh, it ends up being worth it because it just takes time to get units on the battlefield. So make ranged units and use them to control zones. 
At this point, I've got so many units that he kind of has to concede that uh, treasure. Unfortunately, oh, you know what? Actually, that was a good play because I got the uh, population bonus in my capital. That was helpful. So I'm continuing to put pressure on him on all sides. I'm zoning the area with my bountiful units, which are supporting one another. And I'm trying to control the pace and control the board here. There's that shaman, and look at all those units powered up. That's why you want to take that guy out. But uh, here's another example here. I know I'm not going to take this village, but now at least he has to commit an entire unit to getting me off of it, rather than bum rushing my city here, uh, Icolus. So bog him down, go blow for blow. Use your cheap units just to slow them down. And uh, don't let them overwhelm you with units. Make sure that you keep up with the number of units that you have as well. Because Simanti is going to spam a bunch of glass cannons, all these hexapods. It's a pretty typical strategy for them. Uh, in retrospect, I probably used too many explorers there. But I just really hate having clouds everywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like it's worth it for the knowledge of what he's doing in his backfield. So I'm uh, working my economy as I fight him off in this area. And uh, just remember, don't give up. I mean, that play looked pretty bad for me, but I'm going to hang in there. Uh, I really focus on knocking units out. Uh, even if I'm not necessarily in the best position, I'd rather just shoot his hexapods and get them off of the board so they're not a threat anymore. So uh, let's take a look right here. I'll come back to that, but I was talking about keeping pressure. Uh, even though I've got this big fight for my life down here, all the way up in the corner, I'm making sure that this city is really uncomfortable for him. So I'm using my archers to threaten him, and I've got warriors. So if he doesn't do anything, I'm going to take that city next turn because I'll shoot him with an archer and hit him with two warriors. So I'm forcing him to focus his attention all over the place and... I'm keeping him focused on defending himself more than attacking me, is the goal. So there he goes, he's just trying to hold me back. Oh, here's a good tip. Might be going over seven at this point, but when your warriors have a defense bonus, like being in a forest when you have archers, uh, hexapods that are unboosted can't kill them in one shot so it's good to put your units on mountains or if you have archers put them in the forest that way you get that defense bonus and uh, here I've got riders coming up riders are typically better than hexapods if you go toe-to-toe -to -toe. Um, they've got more health and they can kill a hexapod even when a rider is at like half health and I read online that they can survive getting hit by a hexapod if they're on defense bonus area, like if they're on a mountain or a forest when you have the forest defense bonus. So I'm not 100% sure about that, but that sounds pretty good too. Um, and you can see that he has a giant here and I'm able to see that. So it's looking pretty spooky. I feel like this is a situation that a lot of players run into, which is Simanti making a bunch of centipedes and you don't know what to do about it. And I'm going to tell you right now, what you do about that is make a bunch of archers. And I'll get more into that when he moves up at that unit. So I'm continuing to pressure him there. And if you notice, I'm moving my warrior around the edge here. That way, when he inevitably makes a hexapod here, he can't reach the warrior. And the warrior is the one that will finally take the city when I get there. So, um, just being a nuisance, I'm just forcing him to continuously commit resources away from the main battle where he's kind of got an advantage of me with the open field here. And um, Simanti, a lot of the units have a ability called creep that makes it so that rough terrain doesn't slow them down. So this might as well just be an open field to him. Whereas for me, I'm kind of slowed down by all these forests. So uh, he made giants, so in the same turn, I'm going to use my gate of power and I'm going to make a giant because human giants are better than Simanti giants. 
in certain situations. So that's my next tip. Counter their giants with your giants. So here I go continuing to explore down there and uh, spread my territory even though I'm fighting. I made a city wall here just because I was getting spooked out. Um, so that'll bring me to my next tip, but I'll hold off. You know, I'll say it now. Um, don't be afraid to do chip damage on these centipedes. They're pretty intimidating because you know that if you get killed by one, it's going to grow and become a bigger problem. But when they have just a little bit of damage on them, they have a hard time taking over a city with a warrior on it. Um, I think maybe two hits will make them unable to take it over in one shot. And then if you put a wall around it, even better. So while the centipedes are intimidating, they're pretty weak, so it's worth it to just do chip damage on them and get shots. Just make sure you don't get eaten by them. Uh, in this case, there's not much I can do maneuverability-wise because with this bonus, he can move three spaces, so he can reach basically any of my units at this point. Anyway, let's get back into it. So keep the pressure up. Look at that. The city's looking spooky for him now. Um, I'm starting to rotate my units around the side here. I see he's building up a lot of units in the corner, so I'm going to also build up a lot of units in the corner. And uh, just here, I moved my archers back, so while he wants to move up and attack me, he's kind of hesitant because I've got a line of archers and a rider. I've got a bunch of warriors. He knows that he's going to get punched a lot if he goes down there with that fragile but very precious centipede of his. So thanks to that zoning I was talking about, uh, I was really worried about the front line, but he actually runs his centipede backwards to support uh, Coney D because it's looking scary for him. I've got enough units here to take the city next turn, so he needs something to attack that. All right. He makes a second giant. And so do I. I make a second giant down here as well. And I start moving the giants towards his because I don't want him to have that centipede advantage. And with a 40 health giant, uh, it's pretty intimidating to a 20 health centipede that he's really probably hoping to expand and make it into a giant snake. But it's going to be tough if I start hitting it with giants. Um, this brings me to the start of... Well, I'll hold off. So there's where we go talking about chip damage. I just took out his giant with a few archers and warriors. He totally messed up his plan to overwhelm me with centipedes, which I'm sure he was going to try to do. And there is my last tip. Use roads, because centipedes don't have roads. The best that they have is the um, shaman upgrading the units that give them a little bit of a speed, deep, or speed bonus. So... Just use whatever advantage you have over Simanti. With uh, buying the Rhodes tech, I was able to rush my giant into the battle. And in the next turn, I'm going to rush it up onto that city. And the fact that I can move units faster than him is going to be huge. Yet another giant. Uh, let's rewind that real quick. I feel like this was a pretty tactical move. Um, so I have this warrior here, and I, I'm not going to be able to take the city, but what I can do is kind of sacrifice this guy, put him out here, and knock out the centipede. So what that's going to do is, number one, it's going to reduce the number of units he has on the board, which is good against Simanti. Number two, it kind of threatens his shaman. I'm kind of putting him in check if this was chess because that's a very fragile, very uh, essential unit for him. So by putting a Shaman in check, the third thing I'm doing is I'm forcing him to commit a whole unit to taking this guy out. Um, so that goes back to one of the first tips I said, which is just kind of bogging the board down, slowing him down. And that's what I was talking about. He's going to have to deal with that. And I'm taking units out. I'm going to leave his centipede here because I've got a giant on him now. And uh, no matter what he does, I'm pretty much... He's going to have to either run away with that centipede or take something out and leave a fragile segment over that city. And I've got archers all around him, so he's kind of in trouble here. And he resigned. 
So don't give up. Keep going. Follow the tips that I just gave you. Uh, this wasn't a bad player either. Um, my ELO was around 1400 in this game, and his was like almost 1500. So he was technically ranked higher than me. But um, with a little bit of luck in the spawn and uh, some zoning, archers, giants, using roads. What else did I do? I don't know, rewatch the video, get the tips again. Uh, for more content, don't forget to like and subscribe, Drop Talk. And uh, I'm thinking about actually reviewing some fan content. So if you've got good replays and you want me to make a video about them, uh, leave it in the comments and make sure it's a good game. And uh, maybe I'll make a video and showcase you on my channel. Thanks. See you next time. Appreciate you watching. Oh, just last thing I wanted to add. Uh, he did resign here, but in case anyone's interested, a little bonus content. I, I'm i surprised that he resigned. I mean, I get it. It's a little scary for him to see all these archers, but his next move would have been kind of devastating, I think. I mean, I probably would have tried to take this city and he would have killed me with his uh, centipede. And then I've had a couple of archers, but he'd probably start growing centipedes over here. Um... This city, that was pretty much probably done for for him. But what he could have done, actually, is just move the shaman up. And then use these centipedes and hexapods to kill my archers in the front line here. And then once the shaman was moved up, that would have blocked me from taking the city with my giant. Because then he would just mind bend my giant. And uh, I guess he was maybe... Maybe he was frustrated by the fact that I held him off with archers. I don't know. <laughs> um, and down here, I mean, I guess it's sort of even. I don't have a lot of units, and neither does he. But he was probably on the verge of making a centipede down here. So if I were him, I would have kept playing. I think um, he definitely had a chance. I mean, he was going to have to deal with a lot of nuisance. But that's how it goes. Sometimes you just got to wear them down mentally. All right, catch you next time.